Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. In this podcast, your host, Lori Amin, will invite a bookish guest to share their favorite book recommendation. If you share a passion for books and always looking for your next read, then join us. Welcome to the What to Read Next podcast. Today's bookish guest is Addie Yoder. Addie is a life coach, farmer, and a mom. Hi, Addie. Hi, Laura. How are you? Good. Welcome to the show. So excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. I'm just so excited. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, gosh. I, like you said, am a farmer and a mom and a life coach. So lots of things. Um, I have four kids and we live super rural in Missouri. So we um, live like 20 minutes from a gas station, 30 minutes from a grocery store, and we raise corn and soybeans and have cattle. And it's been great in this like stay at home time because the kids can just run. They can just go. And it's awesome. So how long have you been farming? Um, my husband is actually a third generation farmer. So his grandpa started our farm in the fifties okay. and he works with his dad and his brother now. So it's, it's in his blood. I grew up like farm adjacent. I lived near farm, but not actively farming. So I was aware, but not kind of in the corn, like, <laughs> like we are now. So what are some of the most depressing things about being in a farm? Like do you, do you now you live in a farm that you know that you wish other people would know? Um, one of the things that I wish people would know is that, uh, that almost all of your food is grown by a person. Like, mm-hmm. There's a fear out there that, that things are very corporate and there is some of that, but the majority of everything is grown by a person who genuinely cares about their land and about that, that product that you're getting. And uh, to me, that's what makes farming special is that, that it is so in our blood and it's a legacy, you know, that Mm -hmm. we've been given this opportunity to farm three generations and my son is the fourth and, and it's a lifestyle. So we, we just really care about the farm. I love it. Yeah. Um, so you tell us you're a life coach too. So when as far as you get this career track? Oh gosh. I became a life coach because I hired a life coach. I, um, like I say, we're really rural and I have a lot of kids and it was really easy for me as a mom to get sucked into giving everything else my focus. So to give everything to my kids and give everything to the farm and my husband and kind of forget who I was. Mm -hmm. So I hired a life coach and figured those things out. You know, those things that you know about yourself when you're in high school or in college and you're like going to go do everything and you're so excited about life. Those are the things that I lost. Mm -hmm. And even the little things like reading books and shows that I like, you just kind of get busy with other things and forget that it's okay to, to love those things. So hiring a coach just taught me how to shift my mindset and how to be a little bit more forgiving to myself mm-hmm. and to give myself permission to have things outside of being a mom. And after I went through this process, my life coach offered me the opportunity to get certified myself through the John Maxwell team. So I did that in 2017 and have been helping women, my kind of elevator speeches that I help them to find out who they are and to use that to be confident in the decisions that they make every day. Because especially right now, there's so much insecurity in just, am I going in the right direction? Am I, is it okay for me to buy groceries? Do I need to do this or should I Pinterest that or all of those things? And so my goal is just to help women feel better about those things. Mm. I love this. I love, I've worked with a life coach and it's amazing. It's like life transforming that you get to get connected to who you are, what you want, what works for you, what doesn't work for you. You kind of create boundaries. You let go of things that are no longer serving you and just make the most out of it. Yeah. It's like having a best friend, but without the emotions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love this. So let's talk about your reading life. Um, what is your go-to genre? Um, for sure. Romance for sure. But, um, I think within romance right now, my go-to is historical. Okay. With a sideline of cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> my kids are like, um, is that a Duke or a cowboy? What are you reading today? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when did you start reading romance? I love asking this question because everyone has a romance journey. So what's, when did you start reading romance? Embarrassingly early. 
Really? I, yes. I can remember sneaking my mom's Joanna Lindsay books out of her cabinet when I was probably a freshman in high school. And uh, now that I have a freshman in high school, I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, they're good at educa- education. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I, yes, snuck Joanna Lindsay books out of her cabinet and started then and then went into the library and devoured everything. I love it. So what is your favorite historical? Oh, so many, so many. I um, started loving the Mallory series by Joanna Lindsay. Mm-hmm. I really like um, The Duchess Deal. I just recently read that. And I love really that. love Lisa Kleypas's Hathaway's. I have to read the Hathaways. I read the first book in the series and I loved it. And I read The Wallflowers, The Ravenels, and then The Gamblers, um, the Dirk Craven books. But that's actually a series that I actually own that I've been wanting to just go back and read them because I, the first book was so good. They were my first Lisa Kleypas and I was just like all in after that. I have not read The Gamblers, so I'm going to write that down. Yeah, it's actually um, Ben Came You, which is, um, and then Dreaming of You is the second book. Okay. Um, so Dreaming of You is, is, is super really popular. You can get it for two ninety nine. dollars It's an e-book. Um, it has Derek Craven, who's a very, really popular Lisa Kleypas, um, um, basically hero. Um, he owns a gambling casino, and so... The heroine is amazing, but their me too, she kills a man for the for, for Derek Craven. So she's great. She's a great heroine. Um, I like her better than Derek Craven, but I feel like he's a popular hero. And then there's a cameo of what happened in that book in the set in the third book of the Wallflowers. And um, because Iva is the is the competitor, he's a villain in the gambler. So um, Evie's dad is actually the competitor. Well, that's cool. That would almost make me go back and reread The Wallflowers. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, I really love that about Lisa. Like, she creates a world and they're like, they're connected. <laughs> like, you can find something, you can find little Easter eggs here and like, little Easter eggs there. And you're like, oh, they're all connected. They all talk to each other, <laughs> you know. That is the coolest. I love that about series like I really love series for that reason I love to like get those pieces of other people Mm -hmm. yeah so how about cowboys where you go to authors or for cowboy romances well I think Carly Bloom should just write books every day I loved (laughs) Big Bad Cowboy and Cowboy Come Home and I just keep anxiously awaiting for the next one um I've really just started dabbling back into cowboys so I just read um the newest Sarah Richardson. I forget what it's called. First guess, I think it's, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, but I think it's something related to your first guess. Yes. And that was really good. Um, I think I like cowboys because of my farm background. I can imagine. <laughs> Carly in particular, when I read her book, she put a lot of like small little tidbits of actual farm issues and life in there. And when I finished them, I was like, oh my gosh, this girl, like, gets it and so to me I just relate to those so well I love it I can imagine like you can see yourself in the pages you're like oh my gosh there's something to be said about your life being in the pages that's amazing yeah it's like when you read a book and the the heroine is a reader yeah (laughs) yes what is your favorite woman stroke that one was hard that is hard I um I really like forced proximity Mm. I think it's the tension and I like along the the same tension line I like um the forbidden you know like okay. it's my best friend's sister and I shouldn't or you know what I mean like or no I'm not good enough for that person so so I'm gonna hold back and so that tension between both of those kinds of relationships to me is so good I just get sucked right in so, do you have any recommendations for Frost Proximity or for Forbidden? For Forbidden, I just read um, Anna Bennett's new book. Did you read that one? It was called um, When You Wish Upon a Rogue. I did. I read that book. That's- I just loved it. I loved how she was just helping him out. Yep. <laughs> and 
they were not going to like be a couple because she was going to marry someone else. And so, but you know, that tension and I mean, I guess it wasn't forced proximity, but that like, no, we're not supposed to. Yeah, but they had the one day deal. Like they, they they met up for one evening and not one evening per week. So they mm-hmm. had that force with somebody happening, you know. Yeah. In that, that period of time. So I do see some some forbidden there. But it was yeah. that book. I really want to read the other two books in the series because I was I was curious. It's it's one of those historicals that has modern themes about feminism and women's rights and just and talking about their sexuality and talking about how they feel about it. And just create a place of community and discourse and female friendships. So that's like a really cool book for that. Yeah, you definitely need to read the first two. I read them backwards, yeah. like you are maybe going to. I read um, the When You Wish Upon a Rogue first, and then I was like, okay, I have to know about these other people. And I went back <laughs> and read the other two. And in the second one, the girl gets amnesia, which is always fun. We don't get enough amnesia these days. I know. I love it. <laughs> okay. I got to read those two books. <laughs> so what is your least favorite romance trope? I don't know if it's a trope, but I don't like miscommunication. I think it's oh, yeah. the life coach in me. So <laughs> I read one. I, it just makes me crazy. And I'll text my friends and be like, oh my gosh, these people, if they would just have a conversation. And I, I get it that the not having the conversation is how we get the conflict. But at the same time, I'm like, don't be mean just to be mean, guys. Come on. <laughs> well, I hate when it's when there's like something happens to your current and then you he misheard it and then makes this huge big deal as opposed to talk to your current and see what they what would happen like it's just like so annoying i'm like i don't want to have miscommunication so well and there's so many good ways that you can do some of that like like i love a grump a yeah. grump is so fun but you can be grumpy and have a conflict without being mean yeah, I hear. Uh, so a book that I can recommend that has good communication skills because the hero went to therapy is Unspoken by Kelly Rimmer. Um, it's a merchant crisis because you got to love those for sex and um, So they're about to get divorced and your friends kind of like push them to spend the weekend in the beach house. Like they didn't know they were going to be there and they're like, okay, we're going to be there in the same house at the same time. And it's a second chance romance or like basically they're, they're working out the issues why they got divorced. And so the hero, because they got, they got separated, the hero goes to therapy and he deals with his own issues. And then it's communicating to the heroine, like, this is what's going on. Like, you know, here's a good communication skill. So I find out that was actually like gold standard for communication. Yeah. That sounds perfect. Yeah. So awesome. So what is your books have you read in the past few months that you recommend? Oh my gosh. So many. Um, I loved, I keep pressing into everybody's hands. Um, you deserve each other by Sarah Hogel, Mm -hmm. which has that like enemies to lover, but hers wasn't mean. It wasn't, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't like, I'm going to be mean just for the sake of mean. It was so funny. Um, I loved coffee girl by Sophie Sinclair. Did you read that one? No, I have it because it's on Kindle Unlimited, so it's on my Kindle Q to read. It's, it's fun. I just dove right in, and it's a series, so there's a second one. So uh, you get that overlapping characters from members of the band. It's a girl who loses her job and wants to be a professional stylist, so she gets hired by a country singer. Hmm. And, you know, that, like, rock star trope is always fun, too. So yeah. he... Um, calls her coffee girl because she spills coffee on her and him in one of the first scenes and they you know tension and all of the hijinks ensue but there's some really great side characters and the second book picks up where the first one left off but with a different couple I love it and what has been a fair book in the woman's gender you read this past year gosh in the past year um I really like Lauren Lane I like hers, um, yours in Scandal, yeah. anything Lauren Lane, really, but that one was really great. Um, Happy Ever After Playlist is one of my favorites. Anything that just pulls at your heart like that. I just love yeah. them so much. Mm-hmm. And the dog in the sunroof. Yes, they're so cute. <laughs> yes. Yes. So what books are your TBR? So many books. 
So many books. Um, I'm reading the new Ilana Andrews book right now, just so for a little bit of a paranormal shift. Um, her, <laughs> her Hidden Legacy series is just so fun. Um, so I'm reading the new one of those. I'm trying to finish up. I read The Duchess Deal, and so I have Governess Game and Wallflower Wager on my stack, mm-hmm. The Royal We. And, um, oh, I want to read the Travis series. It's old Lisa Kleypas. Yep, me too. I want to read the Travis series too. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's one of those things that was like, I actually own some of the books. I've been accumulating Lisa Kleypas books, like slowly but surely put them in my library. And I'm like, I need to read this. I'm kind of scared that they're contemporary and I love her as historical. And I don't know how much, you know, can translate her writing, but her voice thinks about the Travis series. Yes, I have too. And I've had a couple people say, you have to read these. So that is definitely high on my list. I love it. So tell us where you can find you online. You can find me on Instagram at addy.yoder. You can find me um, at my website, addyoder.com. And yeah, both of those places are great. Awesome. Thank you, Addy, for being in the show. Thank you for having me. If you enjoyed this podcast, feel free to share with friends, subscribe, or rate and review the show. This is the easiest way to support this podcast. Want to join a romance-loving community? Want weekly book recommendations, monthly author Q&As, and book recommendation meetups? Make new friends? Then join our Patreon community. To sign up, please follow the links in the show notes. What to Read Next podcast is part of the Frolic Podcast Network. Find more podcasts to love on frolic.media slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.